Before we start the video, I just want to say a quick thank you to today's sponsor, which is Green Chef. We know them, we love them, they've been a longtime supporter of this channel. Green Chef is a USDA certified organic company, which offers a wide variety of meals from everything from keto, paleo, vegetarian, vegan, delivered directly to your doorstep. So no matter what your lifestyle is, they have you covered. Green Chef makes eating well easy by offering quick recipes with simple step-by-step -step instructions, chef tips, and photos to guide you along. I personally enjoy discovering Discovering new recipes and flavor profiles every single week with very little effort on my part. All I have to do is go to the website, choose what recipes look good, and then it's delivered to my doorstep with ingredients that are perfectly portioned and mostly prepped. And speaking of their ingredients, you can feel great about what you're eating and how it got to your table because they offer a wide variety of high quality ingredients such as their organic non-GMO sustainably sourced produce. So if you want to try Green Chef, you can head on over to greenchef.us slash Beatrice 100 and use code Beatrice 100 to get $100 off plus free shipping on your first box. Again, if you head on over to greenchef.us slash Beatrice 100, use code Beatrice 100, they'll set you up with $100 off plus free shipping on your first box. Thanks so much to Green Chef for sponsoring this portion of the video. Now let's get into it. So someone left a comment a couple of weeks ago that just shook me to my core and I've been thinking about it pretty consistently because it's just it's just so true. And basically what the sentiment was, was that watching my vlogs was the equivalent of watching someone who got stranded on a deserted island by themselves. And I feel that in my soul. <laughs> because it's so true. Uh, like sometimes I catch myself talking to my animals and I'm like, you are a crazy person. Morning snoot check. Chetty? Boop. Deggy? Boop boop. You are so lonely. I very much have Tom Hanks from Castaway Energy. I'm five seconds from befriending a piece of sporting equipment and doing my own dental surgery with ice skates. And I think why this comment really just struck a chord with me is because I've definitely been stuck in this state of waiting. You know, I was sitting there with my toes in the sand, twiddling my thumbs, keeping myself entertained, looking out at the horizon, waiting for a ship to pass by, a plane to go overhead, someone to throw me a rope in the form of talking to counselors and therapists and psychiatrists and doctors and waiting for fitness equipment to arrive. And while all that stuff's well and good and important and you know, I've done good things for my mental health. At a certain point, I'm just gonna need to like build myself a raft and paddle my ass off of this island because it's mental. So those are all the really dramatic things that I've been thinking about lately. Thank you for attending my TED talk. Um, There is some good news. The company that I bought all my fitness equipment from reached out and they set up a delivery date for next week. Very excited about that to not just be floundering around in limbo wondering when it's gonna come because it's been about a month now since I've ordered it. And like, I'm trying to be like completely patient. You know, I realize like there's other stuff going on, you know, COVID still happening. There's shortage with like delivery drivers and stuff. So, you know, it's whatever. But I was like starting to wonder, I was like, was it just a fever dream that I ordered that? Then I couldn't find the receipt and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but it's coming. It's going to be arriving next week. I'm really looking forward to start strength training. I had taken a weightlifting class in high school and the options were either between aerobics and weightlifting and I was like, ugh, aerobics. So I took weightlifting as like a freshman, which was a mistake because it was like no other freshmen and it was all just bros and like older there were like a couple of older girls that were like juniors or seniors and I somehow finagled my way into their group you know solidarity women supporting women they somehow let me in um even though they just made me re-rack their weights the entire time but whatever I was fine to just not be alone in a sea of bros but most of the time we just like messed around in that class and whenever the teacher would come by that's when we would lift so we just kind of like loiter at the bench and then every time the teacher would come by we would do some reps and I accidentally got really strong that semester and I was like oh my god like a little bicep popping through and I just figure if like that's what happens when you're just kind of like casually messing around regularly on the weights. Imagine what could happen if you actually try. And I also don't know, but I think I might have that body type that just responds really well to like strength training. I don't know though. I might just be making that up. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm very excited about that. And so what I wanna do now is I wanna go through my whole rigmarole that I used to do when I was really like heavily making fitnessy type material and I wasn't stuck on a desert island. Measure and take before pictures and kind of run through my process of doing that 
in case you were curious because I'm actually pretty meticulous when it comes to that stuff. You know, the goal is to take out as many different variables as possible. So what you're seeing is truly like the results and it's not the product of differences in posture, differences in clothing that you're wearing, lighting, anything else like that. Okay, so you're gonna want as clear of a spot as you can, but if you move any furniture or anything, all your animals are gonna flood to the new space, like mine did. But yeah, the blanker the wall, the better. The first thing that's really helpful if you're taking your own pictures is getting a phone tripod. This one I got from Amazon for like $17 and it came in clutch so many times. And I always try to take pictures in the same location with the same distance away from myself. I just make sure the phone is sitting at a 90 degree angle and I set the timer and walk back and forth taking a picture of my front, back, and both sides. You can also just run a video and then snap screenshots if you prefer that. For the measurements, I do it in front of a mirror because I can turn and see that the measuring tape is straight, like horizontal across, not wonky or twisted, because things get really dicey when you get some rolls and crevasses involved. But yeah, so and I also make sure the tape isn't indenting my skin, but it's not loose. And I make sure that I use the same measuring tape every single time. But speaking of that, I also make a note of what I'm wearing and if I'd eaten before, just so the next time I measure, I can keep it consistent, which may sound a little overkill, but I'm extra like that. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> the measurements I take are of my neck, bust, directly under my bust, waist, belly button, the fattest part of my belly, butt, both thighs, arms, and calves. Calves, and I measure multiple parts of my belly just because that's my biggest problem area and where I store probably my most weight. But yeah, you could do pretty much whatever you want as long as you're consistent in making sure you do the same body part the next time. Now I'm not super stoked about where my numbers are at currently, but I'm just treating it as data and it's going to be really satisfying to see the change over time. But yeah, that's that. Can I just say that this is a game changer? I've been getting plain yogurt and then sweetening it with a fourth of a scoop of protein powder. And by the way, I don't know how old all of my protein powder is. I have definitely had it longer than a year because like I go through phases where I'm like heavily eating protein powder and then I just kind of don't for months at a time. It doesn't taste bad or anything, but should I be concerned? I don't know. Anyways, but yeah, this literally tastes like vanilla icing and with the raspberries and blueberries mixed in, it tastes kind of like cheesecake. In other news, you guys know how my mom and I canceled our trip to Maine because of Hurricane Henri. Well, it turns out that Henri wasn't as Henri as they thought he was going to be in Maine or that some news outlets, I don't know, the things that I was watching sounded like straight chaos was happening. But you guys in the comments were like, uh, yeah, I'm from Maine and it's not that bad. It's just like a, a rain shower and now it's over. So long story short, me and my mom scrambled and like changed all of our reservations. So now we're going tomorrow. That would be great, except for the fact that because I thought we weren't going and I had like no food in the house because I was preparing to like go away for a week, I bought a metric shit ton of fresh fruits and vegetables that probably will get like saugers in a week's time. I don't think I can eat them all in less than 24 hours. So I was kind of thinking like, should I like bring them to my neighbors? Should I bring them to my next door neighbors and ask them, hey, do you want these vegetables and fruits and kind of like explain the situation? I have never talked to the neighbor on this side and the neighbor over here is the one that invited me to water aerobics when I first moved in and then never spoke to me ever since. So I think that was an empty invitation, but we, we're not gonna dwell on that. My question to you is, is it weird to just bring over fruits and vegetables that are from the grocery store or just like risk it and hope that they're good in a week? I don't know. See, these are the dilemmas of my life. First world problems. But besides the vegetable debacle, there's a couple of other things I'd like to do and accomplish before leaving tomorrow. Besides packing, again, since I unpacked my backpack, um, but I won't put you through that again. Um, <laughs> no, what we're gonna do is a little bit more funner because I am going to be building Chetty a cat castle. A feline fort. A palace. Oh my God, I can't say that one. <laughs> I went to Walmart and I collected a bunch of cardboard boxes. 
because I wanted to make Chetty this like whole extravaganza experience in here. Because he was gonna stay at the house alone, Doug is gonna get babysat by my aunt. The things that Chetty loves is cardboard, hair ties, sleeping all day, and running around all night and making me think that someone's breaking in. Those are the things he loves. Those are the only things he loves. So I'm gonna give him a cardboard castle. And I'm gonna try to finish this in like an hour. I'm gonna do that Pomodoro thing, you know, set a timer and see what I can accomplish in an hour. And one hour starts now. It's working! Me and Dougie are headed out. I'm gonna go drop him at my aunt's house. She looks like 45 minutes away, so there's no way I could do that in the morning before the plane ride or else I'd be missing my plane. <laughs> I don't know if he's gonna think that I'm abandoning him and it breaks my heart. I'm not abandoning you. I'll be back. Look at him, he don't even know. 